Hello. Hi, my name is Nick Hill. I'm senior motion designer at Territory Studio, and I'm here to talk to you today about some of the UI graphics work that we've been doing for Avengers Age of Ultron and Hitman Agent 47. You can feel free to fill in any em empty seats if you want to, or if not, you can just stay up there. So, Territory is a multidisciplinary design studio specializing in motion graphics for films, games, and brands. So predominantly, we, we generate sort of screen graphics, UI graphics for on-set playback or for VFX. Sometimes it's quite tricky to put it into words what we do, so I'm going to show you our UI reel, and you can get a feel for some of the things that we do as a company. As a studio, we don't just do UI design. We do a bunch of other stuff, a few more commercial projects, but this is the main stuff that we, we tend to promote. I started working for Territory about two and a half years ago. I started working on Guardians of the Galaxy as a 3D artist. I was brought on board to help out animate some screens for the Milano ship. That you, If you've seen the movie, there are all the little ones in there, and we did a couple of the kind of bigger ones that are on the control panel too. So I worked there for about six months as a freelancer, and then I went full time. And I've been staff at Territory for about two and a half years now. On a day to day, like my job includes design, sometimes art direction, sometimes 3D design and animation as well. Uh, also 2D animation, so just taking some vector graphics and animating them in After Effects. Lighting, we did this job for DNAD, that was kind of cool. So we modeled these cards and lit them and sent them off for, to be big prints and go as part of their membership package. And then rendering as well. Uh, sometimes even illustration. So this is a job that we did for Virgin Atlantic uh, using a mixture of Cinema 4D, After Effects. So no matter what we do, these are generally the toolkits that we're using. After Effects, Cinema 4D, Photoshop and Illustrator. And it's kind of a mixture of all of them, like jumping between one or the other and maybe all of them at the same time. Generally, we kind of maybe start with Cinema 4D, bring that into After Effects, or start with Cinema 4D, bring it into Photoshop, show some elements around it. I'm going to talk a bit more about that process today um, with some of the screens that we did for Avengers. I guess like the main bulk of my presentation is going to have a bit of a bias towards After Effects, because no matter what we do, everything always kind of ends up in After Effects at some point. Because we, we deal with a lot of on-set production and VFX, we either have to supply like 20 second loops of these animations and then render them out of After Effects, or we have to prepare them for final and deliver a 2K plate. So generally, yeah, it's always After Effects. I had a tutor at university that said After Effects is like Photoshop on acid. Uh, his name is Adrian Beasley. Shout out to Adrian. He's got many quotes, and uh, he taught me some good things. Uh, yeah, he's a good guy. So yeah, the main kind of bulk of this presentation is going to be sort of breaking down the process of designing and animating UI graphics for film. I'm slightly kind of going to miss out the kind of concept bit, because I want to focus on just like the production element, you know, using these tools to make these graphics. 
So I'd like to talk to you about some of the work we did for Avengers, Age of Ultron. I'm going to deconstruct some Photoshop files, some Illustrator files, After Effects files, and then show you our reel. And do a similar thing with Agent 47. So I picked these two projects, A, because I like them, but B, because so we did screens for Agent, uh, Agent 47 were for post-production. They were part of the storyline. We had to work with the editor. We, did, we delivered shots literally like four weeks before this film went into the cinema. So we were, we were right there with the edit, edit team. Whereas with Avengers, we worked with the art department. So we were delivering shots maybe a year before it went into the cinemas because they were shooting it in camera. So there's kind of two different workflows and there's some other little bits. But I think to start with, I broke down this shot yesterday, but I'm going to do a, uh, a different one today because I kind of want to show After Effects maybe in a different light. I'm basically going to take some 3D assets that I make in Cinema 4D and show you the kind of layering process I go through to generate something that kind of looks good and tells the right story. So first of all, I'm going to break down this shot here. So it's literally it's 27 frames long, so it's not very long, but throughout the course of Agent 47, we delivered like hundreds of screens. Some were purely graphic, like 2K plates. This ended up being a 2K plate in the film. Some were like uh, screens that we had to give to an external vendor so then for them to composite into like iPads or mobile phones. And other ones where we had to do like kind of VFX treatments to communicate um, sort of premonitions that one of the agents was having. But I'll talk through this one because we use Cinema 4D to generate this kind of background asset of the maps, brought it into After Effects, used Illustrator to create this UI, and then rendered it again out of After Effects. So first of all, I will jump into Cinema 4D. So here we have the camera animation. So basically how this worked is we got given a rough cut by the edit team. And it's like, yeah, we get to this point where it's the end of the car chase, and we want to say like this, the car is here, like at this point on the on the bridge. It's kind of just there. So we use this piece of software or well, a plugin called OSM Importer, where you can basically get GPS coordinates for anywhere, practically that's you know within reason, and put that into the OSM Importer, and it downloads the map coordinates and creates a spline that you can then extrude. Basically, so it's a really quick way of creating these kind of really random building-like structures that you, you know you'd have to spend a little bit of time kind of modelling them. They're, they're, the geometry is really basic, but it would take some time to kind of model that and give it that feel of randomness. So we do that, we extrude it out. It also brings in like rivers and maps and stuff. This was Salzburg. Um, I'm not sure if this if we actually use the exact point, but it was like a definitely a good starting point to get real real life data. And so there's a couple of things you can do. So we generally render out sort of multiple versions of the same scene and then bring them together in After Effects. And I'm going to talk you through a little bit more of that. So one of the main things, obviously, is just we get a cell render. We turn on edges and then render, see how long this takes. And instantly, you've got something that looks you know, quite graphic. I mean, on its own, yeah, it's OK, but we're going to bring in some more layers and, and sort of build it up. Another pass that we use is just a points pass. Like, and you could, you could kind of combine these two together using just an atom array. But we quite like having the control of like, the level that we can bring through these dots and these lines. So once we have that, we'll then export the camera data uh, just using yeah, the kind of built-in bridge tool export co compositing file here. That gives you camera data and then anything with an external compositing tag on. And then you can bring it into After Effects. So here is, are the 3D layers sort of after, yeah, after I kind of gave them a bit of love, as we say. And I'm going to talk you through just maybe a few of these layers. So here are the various render passes that we brought through. And I'm going to just... Turn them all off, and then turn them on to show you. So this is just a base base layer. It's quite dark, but I'll just turn up the exposure here. So it's a bit better. So it's quite dark. And yeah, so just by introducing extra layers of colors and gradients, you know, it, 
I guess it becomes more of a, a sort of illustrative approach. I'll turn this back down there that we've got some color going on. And so on and so forth. And so you kind of build this up more and more and more. There you are, until you end up with that. And so that's why we, we like to render out things in different layers, because you can kind of bring them in and, can, and add the color. So we added the red to the river and the, the road uh, independently of, of Cinema 4D. So we have, we have a bit of control. If the client comes back and says, like, change it, we can do it without re-rendering stuff. And then from there, we'll kind of take it up a layer and give it a little bit more love, maybe like add some camera lens blurs. We start to overlay the UI. This is a relatively light scene. Like some of the scenes from Avengers would get a bit heavier, but it's kind of interesting. And so in here, we have the UI layer. And there's just some, sort of, some basic animation going on, some just blinking. For the screens for VFX shots, they have to tell the story. So we don't kind of go all like crazy on the animation details. In contrast to some of the Avengers stuff, I'll go really deep and we have lots of intricacies going on. So this stuff's a lot more simple. And we generally just animate like a kind of loop state. And then we bring it over. So here we should have a camera somewhere. Yep, here this camera has been brought in from Cinema 4D. So any 2D elements that you apply over the top of your 3D scene will be tracked in and you know it feels more integrated. So as you kind of see see here. Like the vehicle A is, is locked to the bridge and responsive to the camera. And equally, the UI that you see for like, you know, a few frames on the outside is responding to the camera too. So it's, it's a simple thing, but it's, you know, we always kind of generally use that, that in our workflow, bringing in the camera, bringing in a null. Um, and then from there, we'll maybe add a final little grade to it. Just some kind of curves and stuff. I'm not sure if I did it on here. Yeah, just some curves and some noise, maybe sh sharpen it, all fairly simple stuff. And that's that. So I'm going to show you the reel uh, of the things that we did. Where has it gone? For Agent 47. So I showed this for the first time yesterday. So not many people have seen this before. So you're privileged. So, uh, sit back and enjoy, I guess. So yeah, we had a lot of fun working on that project. Um, worked with a great team at, at Fox and some really fun editors. Do you want to show you something that we all had a little laugh over at the studio? Uh, where is it? So this is as Marty Romances. <laughs> He's one of our art directors at Territory. That's Eldina, our studio manager. Because of licensing, we weren't allowed to just take any old picture off the internet and put it in. So we all put our faces in this one shot. So if you go and see Hitman Agent 47. I won't say any more, but just but look out for <laughs> for this shot in the movie because it features all of our, our faces and some of the editorial team on 20th Century Fox's side. So that was a lot of fun. Right. So now let's go. Let's yeah. Let's jump into some Avengers stuff. I guess uh, yeah. You've probably been waiting for that.
So I did. I broke down this screen yesterday, but I'm going to break down it again because I have three sets of scene files for it. I have the Illustrator, the Photoshop, and the After Effects file. And I'm basically going to go through the process of, you know, building up these layers to make this 3D asset. Some of the Illustrator files for the UI, and then the kind of process that you know how we got to that point, how we get to this end bit. This is the final screen. How it ended up. I think they might have used an earlier version in the movie that was more flat and two-dimensional. We had to go through a process of designing this plant layer. This was for Dr. Banner, the Hulk. Um, and it was one of the glass panels that featured in the Avengers Tower. I don't know if any of you have seen the movie, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a great, it's definitely a good one worth a watch. So we went through a whole process of designing this plant asset in 2D, first of all, because that's what the art department signed off on. And then we had to make it 3D. So I'll talk a little bit about that. I'll go and show you like some of these elements that are like super tiny, but how we give a little love and craft to animating them. Right. The process usually is we have a designer working in, in Illustrator, creating the UI assets, and then a 3D artist making up some of the other assets, like some of the you know the plant stuff that I was saying about uh, this stuff. So we have someone designing this this content and someone designing all the other that are UI overlays kind of happening simultaneously. And here's the Illustrator file, the actual Illustrator file uh, that was designed by one of our designers. And as you can see, you know, it gets quite heavy. There's quite a lot of layers. And what we would usually do is collapse all of this out, ready to bring into After Effects to render. But before that, there's a whole kind of design process where you just sort of copy and paste elements over into Photoshop and sort of move them around get them looking how you want to get them looking. So. Sweet. And so this was our initial reference for the plant membrane as well. We just got, we, yeah, art department liked that and they told us to go away and make it. So I think I had about a day to come up with something that looked like that. And if I break down some of the layers of it, maybe I should have a, look, a little look. Yeah, these files get quite heavy after a while, so there's a lot of stuff going on. So, yeah, this is how it started. This was the beginning of the sort of, of the 2D version, and it was a mixture of layers that were built in Cinema 4D and then kind of treated a little bit in After Effects just to get, get, that, get that feel to it. I'll show you, I'll kind of dig down a little deeper so you sort of see them. So you just kind of start with this which was just like, I got a sphere and cloned a load of splines onto it and then added some sort of wind turbulence to get that. Wow. It's like a T-Rex is in the building or something. And so yeah, just building it up bit by bit, layer by layer, until eventually you kind of get sort of the end result. Which is something like that, to start, just to start with. But then the client turned around and said, oh, we, you know, that looks good, but we want it in 3D. We want a 3D version. So I basically had to take like, that 2D asset, duplicate it off into Z space in After Effects, and then create this 3D cylinder around it using Cinema 4D. And so our head of 3D, Peter Zenyi, showed me some really cool plugins to make this kind of volumetric noise-based sort of craziness that you go around it. Because all of this stuff has to be done in a super quick turnaround. So that's why we kind of like, we jump into 3D, do it really quickly, get it into After Effects, and then make it look nice. So then we have this asset. It's kind of time to pull in some of these 2D elements that have been made in Illustrator and then prepped in After Effects. So it's kind of two ways we, we do it. You either bring in literally the Illustrator asset and then animate that or you can kind of deconstruct it a little and remake it in After Effects so that it runs a little smoother. And I've, I'll talk about another screen later that uses that workflow way more effectively. Because sometimes, you know, some of these Illustrator files are like 700 layers, and when After Effects is trying to read all of those vector layers, it can become quite slow. So it's worth taking the time to kind of redraw them as shape layers, and then it runs really quickly. We didn't have to do it so much in here, because there's actually a lot of 3D content, like all of these are just duplicates of what content was used to make up this. So you kind of offset them, duplicate them around. So yeah, 
that's kind of that's kind of one thing. Let's maybe go up a little bit. So I'll see if I can find it because there's obviously quite a lot of layers going on in here. But I wanted to talk about these little guys down here purely because they're tiny. But we st even still spend time going down into those comps and like animating those and giving those love and like you know making sure that the easing on our keyframe is nice just so that we could like totally nerd out over it. But I'll find it somewhere. Let's have a little look. So even inside that one little comp, you know, we've got this going on, which is all right, maybe. But it ends up being like one tiny component in one screen that then is on part of a set that then gets, gets shot through a lens. So, but it's funny how all of these little details do actually really add something, even if they're just like blurred out in the lens and kind of blinking a little bit. It's like definitely adds something. So it's worth spending the effort. I think I guess that's kind of what takes it up maybe an, another layer. So. so yeah, that's kind of that. Um, I'm going to show you the reel that we did for all of the work that we did for Avengers. Um, we're pretty proud of this one. And then if there's any questions afterwards, I can kind of take them. So have a little think and enjoy. Thank you.